Cisco. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Cube. Covering VMworld 2015. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. Now your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome back to VMworld 2015 here in San Francisco. This is SiliconANGLE TV's live broadcast of VMworld 2015. I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon.com. Happy to have on this segment talking about the future of software-defined storage, hyperconverged, everything there is Christos Karamanolis, who's the CTO and principal engineer in the VMware Storage Group. Christos, first time on theCUBE, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me here. All right, so you know the buzz over the last year. One of the hottest topics inside the VMware ecosystem has been this whole, you know, virtual SAN. Uh, VVALS, of course, has had you know quite a bit of activity. Uh, can you first set for us, you know, what, what's your role inside VMware? How long have you been there? Sure, I've been a long timer at VMware. I've been uh, with VMware for ten years almost now, and for most of this time, I've been working on storage and availability products. The last. Uh, few years, I've been working on Virtual Sun specifically. I was one of the original architects of the product and uh, the people that had the original idea. And uh, most recently, the last few months, I've uh, have had a wider role. I'm now the, the CTO of the business unit with a, a responsibility for technical insight and roadmap for a range of products, not only vSUN, but also our availability products, the core storage features, and uh, Included in this. Place. Yeah, so, 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 so Christos, uh, Charles said, I think there's, uh, if I remember right, 500 engineers inside the, mm -hmm. the, the storage mm -hmm. unit 10 years ago. I, I'm, I'm curious how many were in that group. Oh, we were a handful. Uh, yeah. We could, you know, you could always walk down the hallway to the engineer you need to, to deal with. So, yes, yeah, it has been a, you know, a very big change in that respect, even though in the engineering teams we still maintain a, a mentality of a small company, a startup, if you wish, where Everybody works closely with everybody else, and even though now we're distributed, we organize our projects in such a way that teams are very agile, they work very closely uh, yeah, together. Yeah, so I mean, I think everybody that watches this space knows that you know VMware's always had a lot of storage pieces and interaction. You know, back to uh, you know what happens with SRM, uh, what mm -hmm. storage vMotion when that came out. Uh, but the, the role has become a lot more front and center uh, mm -hmm. when you talk about what's happening with vVols and, and, and virtual SAN. Uh, can you just give us kind of your personal journey and insight as to the, the, that transition? Yeah, actually, this goes back many years. I would say probably sometime around 2009 where we start th th thinking a little bit more fundamentally about what is uh, storage, how is the industry, evol in this industry evolving, and what uh, do we see VMware's role being in this uh, new world. And we made an explicit decision that uh, we need to drive the narration, that we need to drive the industry in a direction we, be we believe is the best direction for our customers, current and future. So our vision around storage from back then uh, in 2009 when actually we we shared a white paper with uh, many partners back then, uh, was twofold. On one hand, we want to introduce a management model from, from storage that is much more application-centric. A model where the owner of the application, the administrator, can require in, at a high level, in the form of policies as we call them, what they want from the storage, without necessarily having to know all the gory details of the hardware or implementation details of every individual vendor's products. So you say what you want, know how to do it, and then the storage platform should be able to automatically uh, configure, provision your storage so that you get the quality of service, the properties you want for your application. That is one side, and that led us to a number of projects and features now that range from uh, storage, policy-based management, to virtual volumes, and uh, a number of uh, data protection uh, so solutions uh, around that. On the other hand, we also decide that uh, we should really give to our customers uh, a storage platform that implements that vision in the best possible way. Uh, so that was the, the, you know, the genesis of uh, Virtual Sun. Essentially, Virtual Sun is VMware's own storage platform that follows a certain architecture. We decide that a hyper-converged architecture is the best way to go because it meets, it meets in the best possible way the requirements of our uh, customers. Requirements for uh, streamlined, simple procurement, deployment, configuration, and operational uh, you know, management of, uh, of their storage infrastructure. 
and do that in a way that does not require specialization, that does not require to be expert in any specific vendor's uh, products or you know, don't need to even know the gore details of the storage hardware. Instead of that, we want to offer to the customers a way to manage storage in the same way they manage today um, their compute infrastructure, the compute resources, and now with NSX also the network resources. A unified model where they can manage their clusters that provide all the fundamental services they need for their applications. Yeah, uh, I think Charles Fan uh, had a good way of looking at it. He said, we don't think of a vSAN cluster, uh, it, it's just a vSphere cluster right. that, that uses vSAN, so it's a very different operational model. Uh, you know, we know that the growth of the virtualization admin, uh, you know, yes. highlighted always this year, and we, we see, you know, record numbers uh, of attendees. So, maybe, maybe talk a little bit about, uh, you know, is this, you know, a major shift, or you know, it's just kind of a continuation uh, and expansion of what uh, you know we, we, we've, we've been seeing from vSphere uh, so over the last decade. There is, there, there, I would like to differentiate here, since you know I'm a, an engineer at heart, the technology and the product. Uh, the the vSAN storage platform has been designed as a generic storage platform, and here at VMware we have a number of sessions where we actually talk about that and we stress some of the advantages of that approach. Now, for the specific product we have, we are releasing, we have released, and we are uh, supporting now. We decided to take a certain packaging uh, approach, if you wish, which is make this product very easy to manage by essentially taking, making the storage cluster to be the same as your compute cluster. That has sounds like a very simple idea, but has tremendous benefits, starting from the fact that. Uh, we don't need to introduce new management abstractions. You don't have to configure and provision your storage and then decide which host has visibility to which data store. All those you know, fencing and zoning techniques that you probably are very familiar yourself with, which actually the kind of complex management operations we try to eliminate. Moreover, by making this simple uh, uh, constraint, putting this simple constraint on the product, we allow uh, management to be done with simple extensions to existing management abstractions and workflows, and even APIs that are extremely common among our customers, that they're used to uh, write scripts or code that automate the, the management of the infrastructure. So with Virtual Sun now, we have added a few new APIs and extend a few existing APIs. So for the vSphere admin, this is a natural extension of managing their compute clusters. Yeah, uh, I, I thought just came to me because you know you think back as to what's happened in storage the kind of the last 15 years. You know there was a, the, many attempts to do what we called storage virtualization, mm -hmm. and let's mm -hmm. put a layer of abstraction in there and try to help clean it up. Well, storage is pretty complex, and while virtualization from a compute standpoint we've seen huge benefits from a storage pan standpoint, there were usually real limits as to I couldn't leverage the functionality underneath mm -hmm. it. True heterogeneity, heterogeneity underneath what was difficult. Um, you're not trying to virtualize storage here at all, I don't think. What you've really helped is simplify uh, what's happening and you're leveraging the platform that you have. Is, is that, yes, that a fair statement? Or? It is, from, from a customer's perspective, yes it is. But from a technology, yes there is, there are some complexities yeah. there obviously, but that is the whole point. We're trying to hide the complexities and deal with some of those, I've worked on some of those early virtualization products uh, myself. What we're trying to do is hide all that complexity that we were exposing to the administrators before and handle them in a way which is automated, where the options are the obvious ones. And because we, we have certain constraints, we have the clusters, we have the certain types of hardware, we can afford to do some of those things automatically now. And so that in addition to an extensive hardware compatibility list certification process we have allows to deal with a broad range of hardware without having to expose some of the gore details of the decisions of how you configure that hardware up to the administrator. So, but on, as you pointed out very well, from the administrator, this is not really about storage. This is about the data consumption needs of their applications, and that is exactly the, the abstractions we're exposing 
upstream to the application of the administrator. Yeah, thanks. It's good to break down some of the, the technology versus the packaging. Uh, one of the frustrations I've had when people look at this market is they tend to say, okay, when the first version comes out there and we've shrink-wrapped it uh, you know, and shipped it out as here's the SKU and here's the sheet metal and they're like, oh, okay, hyperconvergence, it, it's a box. Mm -hmm. And it's like hyperconvergence as a trend, mm -hmm. the box is the least interesting piece of this. Oh, yes. It's super important to have the stack, the hardware compatibility list, to have tested that out. I mean, that if we simplify that, that, that that's a huge savings because operationally we, we know how things break. But I want to give you, know, in your CTO hat, you know, what do you see as, as the vision? Um, you know, this, this solution is good today, but it, it's not the mm -hmm. end. Where mm -hmm. does this journey take us, um, and, and what, what's the vision going forward yes, for the future is, of it? This is the yeah. few billion dollars question, yeah, I guess. Yeah. So I see two, two directions there. Um, on one hand, we, today we have a, pl a platform that, as we discussed already, the, the management which is centered around the management of your, of your compute clusters. And those compute clusters, those management abstractions exist in vSphere today because they, they are the core around which we do distributed resource scheduling, around which we deploy features such as HA, DRS, vMotion. And why do we have those? Because applications today are the so-called monolithic applications. They do not have natively the ability to be fault tolerant, to be highly available, to be able to tolerate uh, and control res resource changes themselves. So this is why vSphere has been so successful, because we add all these business continuity features to applications that had no idea about such uh, concepts when they were originally designed. Now we're moving gradually towards a world of cloud-native applications, third-platform applications, whatever you want to, to call them, where we see that the application, by definition, is more aware of the infrastructure, uh, scalability, distribution, and even fault tolerance features are natively integrated in the application. So needs for things like DRS or HA are very different or may not even exist in some of the new applications. Uh, however, now we see these applications uh, having scalability requirements which exceed the, the current limits of uh, vSphere clusters, compute clusters, which are up to 64 nodes, as you understand. So one set of challenges and opportunities I see ahead of us is how to deal with storage infrastructures that can meet the demands of those applications. How can we use a platform like Virtual Sun to extend it and deal with the management of infrastructures that span thousands, perhaps tens of thousands of physical hosts, with applications that even are distributed across geographic locations. So one set of uh, challenges is management of storage infra infrastructure at very large scale. And we have a few interesting ideas, and I had the opportunity to, to talk to customers today in a couple of events about that. On one hand, what we are exploring as we speak with a few prototypes in the lab is new management models where we collect and process a lot of data that have to do with the physical infrastructure, with the application workloads that run on that virtual infrastructure. We, we store them, we process them, and through that processing and analytics we run on them, we provide the users with a, a holistic view of their infrastructure, allowing them to zoom in in the, in the areas of interest where th that those areas have to do with problems and help them do troubleshooting and help them decide what, is, what are the right remediation actions, or there is just awareness of how the application is doing, how it is evolving, and what are the trends they should be aware of so they are prepared in terms of investment in hardware, infrastructure, and so on. So that is one, one dimension. That, that's, I, I'm very excited that we have some really cool ideas. The other dimension has to do with this consumption of storage. I said all these nice things about fine-grained policy-based management where an application gets the, the quality of service it requires without the administrator need to, having to do any fine-grained configuration of physical hardware. Well, we want to take this model to go beyond traditional virtual machines with the virtual SCSI disks to a model where applications that use other abstractions, perhaps file systems, or native blog protocols like NVMe, or perhaps even object stores like S3 and the similar types of stores, that they can really take advantage of a, a single platform with a unified management model along the lines of what I described a, a few seconds ago, but still be able to consume different types of stores and manage them with the same approaches. So that is the other thing. 
offers of applications, for example, containerized cloud native applications, file systems, distributed file systems that solve some of the critical problems that we know that address image management, shared data volumes, and so on. All right, well, uh, Chris, just I feel like I'm looking back to my year two summary that I did on ServerSAN, and one of the critiques I gave is current solutions today, they're using the same applications typically that sat in your traditional SAN or NAS environment, Absolutely. and they hadn't been, it, it, it's not the modern applications, it's not the, you know, the cloud native, hugely scalable architectures. Um, you, you laid out a bunch of the, the, the challenges there. Uh, do you think we're going to hit, from a technology standpoint, the, the growth of those applications and the maturity of this solution set? Um, do you think they, they match pretty well? Uh, you know, what, what, what's mm. the, the outlook? I, yes, that's a good question, which is you know, what we all are you know, debating uh, here, but I believe at a high level we have the, the building blocks for the technologies that are required. I believe we have the ability to scale to infrastructures of thousands of uh, physical hosts. We have the ability to provide the storage, even a third model of storage with high availability ensured by the platform for cloud native applications. Where I think the, bigger, the biggest challenge is and where things really you know, make a difference is the model of managing those infrastructures. And this is something which is a little subjective. That is something we have to, to develop in an iterative fashion, jointly with customers, and see you know, what is the right model. Because nobody quite knows these things today. With this, the, the few uh, uh, software development teams that have currently built such uh, applications, they are very sophisticated, or they build applications for very specific environments. I think the challenge and the opportunity for companies like VMware is to develop a model, a management model that allows and facilitates many different software organizations from different companies to take advantage of these new ideas without having to reinvent the wheel from scratch. All right, well, Christos, really appreciate you taking time. I, I know you've been talking a lot this week, as of all of us, trying to keep our voices through the final sprint here. Uh, lots of stuff to, to look forward as to the maturation, growth of uh, you know, this really important trend. So Thank you, thank you for having yeah. me here. It was an opportunity to, to talk with you and appreciate it. Awesome, thank you for watching. Uh, we'll be right back, wrapping up uh, day three here over the next couple hours here with SiliconANGLE TV's coverage of VMworld 2015. Thanks for watching.